What's going on my friends welcome to another video here My name is Bijan and in this video we're gonna be doing another I don't necessarily have a name for it Maybe you guys can help me give a name in the comments give like a series like make something like a good name like you know Not just a chart request analysis, you know, but that's what we're doing It's you know last video I did something on Instagram where I said hey give me some stocks you want me to analyze I did that video then some people commented on YouTube said they want to see this and that so I'm gonna try it out one stock per video instead of three in one and shout out to ooh, thankfully I remembered to change the screen this time. This is like my fourth take, guys. I, I promise you. And I just keep forgetting to change the screen. Um, okay, so where's he at? Where's he at? There he is. Shout out to Henel. He said, Can you analyze Adobe in the next video, please? So here we are in the next video, and this is Adobe, and we will be analyzing it for him. If you guys have any other ones that you want me to analyze, let me know, and I'll be happy to give you guys my opinion, my perspective. Um, again, this is just to join the bag bandwagon or whatever it's called. I'm not, this isn't investment advice, this isn't money advice this is just me waving my hands around and just telling you what i think so take it with a grain of salt maybe two grains of salt if you're feeling a little extra you know all right guys let's just jump into it here so we're going over adobe now keep in mind i usually look at things from a short-term perspective when i do these videos because i always assume that you guys are usually short-term type of traders and that's pretty much that so let me know if you want some longer term stuff and, and i will happy to, to give you guys that as well okay so i'm going to start from a long-term way and zoom out long story short it's like it's not a bad stock, you know. It's Adobe, obviously from like Photoshop and all of that stuff. It's been going up pretty much all year. It's hit highs, and now it's given a little bit of a pullback, which isn't bad, you know. It's nothing too crazy there. Um, I mean, it's you know, it's healthy, I guess you can say. Stocks go up and down, you know. So don't panic. Now, would I get in it? Would I not? Let's analyze it and see what's going on and when I would do so as well. So from my perspective, it's at a very key area right now, being that it's at this. 600 area um, It's like a you know, a psychological area and as well from like the past as well It has some I guess you can say key area support resistance there as well. So I Don't want to do anything until I see what it does with this 600 now someone might ask Why are you not jumping to get into it right now since it's at 600? Well, because there aren't enough flashlights for me to get into it for the upside in a sense of a bounce um some things with the order flow and all of that. I'll get into that after I do the charting because I know that's where we get a little bit geeky and technical. I don't want to scare anybody away quite yet. We'll go over the technical side, then we'll go into that, and then we'll wrap it up. But from a technical perspective, I would like to see at least what it does from this 600 area because it looks like it's kind of holding down here. Even, again, if you remember, remember from my last video, I mentioned my little blue line here, the way I like to use it. Um, so it looks like it's still going to continue going downward. And it looks like it's kind of forming a little bit of like a descending triangle kind of basketball pattern here. You know what I mean? Looks like he wants to crack below this and drop down low. Now, the reason why I don't get in it to the downside, remember, we don't just get into trades just because of this or just because of that. You have to have like all your parameters lined up. You know what I mean? Like multiple different strategies, at least for me. That's how I operate. So I like to see multiple different things. And when all these multiple things align, that's when I like to strike. So there is some opportunity for both the downside and the upside here, given how it treats this 600 area um, and how the order flow starts to shift after that. I like to, I just want to analyze the 600 area over the next few days, but it could very well bounce off of the 600 area. Again, it's been going up. So it could just be a pullback. Key area 600 could hang out here, bounce right, right back up, and carry on to even new highs here. It's a possibility. Even on the RSI standpoint, you know, you look at it from a long-term perspective, it's down here. It could be potential for a bounce from this longer-term perspective. And remember, this isn't some crazy penny stock that we're analyzing here saying it's just going to go to zero soon, you know? It's, it's, a, it's a healthy stock to say the least. So from that perspective, again, 600, I want to see it first. I'm not jumping to it because there aren't other flashlights like the order flow and all that that I'll get into here. But if we do hang out at that 600 area, start to consolidate a little bit, kind of, you know, balance out, you know, and my blue line comes down here and we're still holding below the blue line, he starts to crack that 600, then I might be open to getting into it for the downside. And again, it could very well kind of, you know, hang out, consolidate, you know, bounce. Again, looking at it from a short-term perspective, I don't see that necessarily happening right away that it bounces to the upside, it still looks a little bit more weaker, and I have yet to see any reversal signs going up yet. It's just a potential, I know anything's a potential in the market here, uh, but to me it looks like it has a little bit more room to the downside possibly before it wants to go up, and part of that is because of the order flow. Now before I get into that, I just wanna give my little roadmaps, being that if it gets below the 600 area, 
I'm more than likely expecting it to kind of just like a roadmap, you know, once you get to, you know, you're taking a trip from Los Angeles to Vegas, right? You can expect that, okay, once you get to here, then you're going to have a straight route to that way, possibly. You know, something's going to happen along the way, but that's how I like to see the market. So if we get below this 600 area and we don't snap back above it, no signs of reversal, none of that, and it continues looking the way that it has been, then we're probably easily going to see the 575 and could potentially go down to 525 before we really start seeing a big sign of reversal. But again, that could take time. I don't think it's, it's not something that's going to happen like instantly either. You know, we're not seeing a lot of order flow to the downside. I'm seeing more more to the downside than the upside, but we're not seeing anything extreme to the downside either. So I see it as probably a stock that's just kind of given a pullback, might consolidate a little bit before it continues going back up. But in the short, short term perspective, it looks like it could go down a little bit more. And those are the roadmaps basically there. And then obviously if it did go back up, we would need to clear these areas and get obviously above even just this thick line right here. And that's, you know, again, a possibility as well, but let's look at the order flow now. So Moving down to the order flow, what I want to do is first highlight, I saw it, I believe a couple weeks ago, it was on the 600, this 2,500 of open interest, I saw the majority of it, I believe a $2 million worth order came through for those and I've been monitoring it by seeing that it's still on the open interest. So there's basically somebody out there that thought this was going to go down to 600 or lower or basically just thought it was going to go down and they're still in it. That's the key idea is I see that they're still holding that position, which means they more than likely think it's also going to continue going below 600. Now, remember, take this with a grain of salt because we don't just blindly follow what we think somebody else with a lot of money is doing, but we like to use it as like a little bit of a guide. Maybe somebody knows something. You never know what's going on. Just, you know, use it as a guide, tie it in with various other things. And this is partly the reason why I'm not jumping to it to the upside. You know, I might have analyzed it and seen a good perspective from the upside, but then when I come and analyze this stuff, it doesn't look too healthy necessarily to the upside. So that's why I kind of like to hold off and let it, you know, some other ones I might jump to right away in similar scenarios if other things lined up. So basically this is the big one that I was looking at here. And on top of that, I believe they also added into it today. Because if you look at the options, time and sales, right where are we at here? right here. That's the same exact one, the January 21st of 2022 that we were talking about here. Where are we at? Right here. That's that one. I'll just keep them open. And there was an order for 250 of them came through. Now it doesn't necessarily say if it was bought or sold, but I'm going to make the assumption that it was bought because the price was 3270 and it was when the bid in the ask was 3235 and the ask was 3280. So it was closer to the ask side. So I'm going to assume it was that. But my point being is even if all 400 of these were that one big buyer selling his entire order, it it's, wasn't it wasn't the entire order is my point is he still had more of it than just 400 contracts. So he's still in it. Maybe he took some profits if that was him selling, but it looks like somebody or him even added in today. Now, if you notice, there's also a buy order for a large amount of the 615 calls for this week expiry. So that's why it looks like there's a chance that it could just kind of stop at this 600 area, kind of linger a little bit, consolidate, balance out for the rest of the week. If it doesn't want to crack that 600 to, well, not today, the market's closed, but like within the next few days. And this could be like a little sign that somebody thinks that it has short term upside. You know what I'm saying? But that's what I'm, why I mean is I don't see any large wild orders coming through for anything on the outer Januaries, things like that. You know, you don't see any large volumes or anything like that coming in like you do on the put side and all that. So it's just not telling me that it's ready to reverse and go up. But anyways, that's pretty much that. I didn't want to get too crazy with this option stuff and get too technical and scare you guys. Um, just one last thing from the today's option statistic, I guess I can say again, take all this with a grain of salt because it doesn't really mean that much. This is where we start getting a little geeky with it. But if you look at it, we're almost even in terms of calls and puts bought. Of course there were or in terms of calls and puts traded, there were more calls than puts. But what I also like to look at is at the ask is there were more puts bought than there were calls bought at the ask. And then on the same side, we look at the bid there was a more percentage of calls sold than there were puts sold. So it just looks a little bit bearish to me, at least for like the you know next couple weeks. Um, that's why I'm not necessarily jumping to it. It doesn't really look too crazy for the upside, but that's pretty much that. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you did. Let me know if there's any other ones you want me to do. And that's pretty much that. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.